Let me explain how to write in production of a research proposal. In production of every research proposal must contain these seven points. I will explain all these points in detail. In, in overview of the topic, introduce your topic, start broadly and then narrow down the topic. Previous research, background knowledge or summarize existing research. A rationale niche research gap. Describe the methodology a thesis statement. As you know that research proposal is very very important if you are looking for PhD admission, if you are looking for MS admission, or if you are looking for fellowship, you know the fellowships because there are so many fellowships like the GSPS, like the TWAS, the TWAS, the World Academy of Sciences. So they need research proposal. So you must need the techniques, the command, how to write a successful research proposal. And it does not mean that if you are in social sciences or artificial intelligence, if you are working in any research field, this technique, these rules applies, right? So let's get started. First of all, you, in the first paragraph, you have to uh, tell the readers and the viewers about the overview of the topic. For example, if you are working in any topic, so you have to give the overview. What do you mean the generalized information? That is basically the generalized or the broad, the broad view of your topic. You have to give the broad view of the, that is basically called the hook sentence. Uh, we will explain in the coming paragraph. It is clear from the name that introduction, you have to introduce the topic. This is understood. You are not supposed to put something else in the introduction. You have to introduce the topic. And the third important thing is you have to start broadly and then narrow down. It, it means like you have to start like this. And you have to start from very broad here and you have to start like this. You have this funnel here and you come down narrow, 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 narrow. You see here, you have to start from broad and you come down and narrow, narrow down and reach to your research question, right? Let me show you my paragraph here. Uh, it may help you. So in the first paragraph, you have to include all these three things. From these three uh, points, you have to make the first paragraph of the introduction of your research proposal. Look here, in the first paragraph, start from the broad or general overview of the topic and then narrow it down to your specific topic. Let me give you examples. Your topic may be different. If I'm working in a specific layer in solar cell, because in solar cell, there are many layers, one layer, another layer, another layer, another layer, another layer. So I'm, I'm interested in this absorber layer, let's suppose. So I have to talk generally about solar cell technologies, that what are the first generation solar cell, second generation, third, fourth generation solar cell. And then I have to come to my specific point, specific layer in my this paragraph, right? This is, uh, we, will, we will include all these things in the first paragraph, right? Now let's go to the second paragraph. The second, I mean, probably third paragraph. Uh, we have to, talk about the previous research because nothing is there you you are not supposed to include something from your own side you have to uh, get information from the published knowledge from the published knowledge published knowledge I mean published papers right you are not supposed to write from your own side so previous research you have to discuss the previous research the background knowledge mean the uh, where you will get the background knowledge from published papers right are the existing knowledge because now I am writing my proposal. So, so far, this is called basically the existing knowledge, the literature basically, right? So, we will make from this point the second paragraph. Let me show you here. The, this paragraph basically narrows down to the published research. You see here, here you have to read the published research of your era of interest. If it is artificial intelligence, if it is, it is, it is robotics, so you have to take help from published research article. Here you have to clearly mention other people's work on the same topic by simply comparing and contrast. You have to give uh, this all information, right? Uh, by their, their finding. You need to cite the latest work as well as the old work. I mean, if you are you if your field start from 1980, so you have to cite some old papers, and now it is 2023. So you have to also cite from latest uh, research papers, right? This means you must need to know what has done in the field and what is going on in the field, right? 
The fifth point you have to include in your introduction is basically the rationale. When you see this rationale word, this means that why? Why you are doing something? Who is forcing you to do this? Who is forcing? What are the driving force? The driving force. This means rationale. This is also called niche. Niche. And also called research gap. These are all closely related words, right? So we will make the third and fourth paragraph from this uh, rationale niche. Here we have to tell the readers. Now, you see here, here we narrow the, the, the topic here. We first we in first paragraph we talk the generalized thing. Here we come to the published article. Now here we further now uh, specify or the narrow the topic here. This paragraph further narrow down the topic and explain why the topic is worth reading. This means it will reveal a gap. Once I reading research papers, so it will automatically reveal the gap in the current research. Why you or I am undertaking the project or a topic? Why is this research needed? The limitation of the previous study. This is very, very important. This is basically called a gap. And this is also called, we call issue here. And here is, is called problem. And from here, we will make statement and that is called problem statement, right? So in third and fourth paragraph, we have to include all these things. Where you will get this information from? Reading the paper, right? Now, once we find the gap here, once we find the gap here, now we have to describe our methodologies. This is maybe in the fifth and last paragraph here, you see? This paragraph make it clear how I are you going to fill their gap because we, we find the gap. So what methods, what 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 techniques, what methods or what techniques we will apply, we will use to fill the gap, to solve the problem. You see, our plan of achieving the milestones, what your research will add to the existing knowledge or to the literature. Is we explain that people doing that work, people doing uh, a lot of people are working in the same field. So what my work will contribute? What my work will contribute to the existing knowledge? Contribute to the existence knowledge. Exist knowledge. This is how we have to write in this paragraph. In the last paragraph, if you wish to write, this is basically the thesis statement here. And this paragraph basically serves is a conclusive part of the introduction. Because as I explained that, uh, every separate part like introduction, literature review, abstract, it 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 it, it played the same role just like the full body. It has some starting point, thesis statement, conclusion. So this thesis statement, this here you have to conclude your introduction. At the end of the introduction, just summarize the ideas that will run through your whole research proposal. And you can also give suggestions here or uh, your further future recommendations. This is uh, if you wish to include, okay, if you don't want to include. So these six or seven points are very, very important uh, to make uh, your introduction meaningful. And lastly, as I explained many times in my videos, that your proposal, if it is your, if your proposal is classic proposal, mean the world number one proposal, and it contain great superb ideas, but if you do not write well, nobody is going to read it. Nobody will be going to accept it. So reading, writing is also very important. And how you become a good writer? Read. Read a lot. It is, it is, this writing, writing is direct opinion to read a lot. 